All right, got another request video today. Using the TX16S, this person wants to have a counter that will cycle through a list of callouts for whatever purpose. They want to do some maneuvers or something like that with their uh, air aircraft and they want to hit a button. Uh, they want to use the SH switch, which normally is the momentary. I moved mine, so everything in here I'm going to be using the SF switch, which is my momentary, but just uh, you know, so you know the in your case you'll be using the SH or any momentary push button you can use the uh, T5, T6 you can convert those to push buttons Twin center. Uh, I've got a button on the back of mine here I could use that for this any momentary button is what is this is designed around I've actually came up with this for a uh, pre-flight system that I do I may make a video on that one of these days it'll work for this purpose as well so let me show you first uh, it in action and then I'll get into the code there's lo some logical switches and some special functions that you've got to do to get it uh, set up so let me zoom in on the screen here so you can see what I'm doing but when I pull the switch uh, I'm referring to uh, in this case my SF switch so let me zoom in on the screen so you can see what's going on all right so on the screen here I've just got uh, a counter or value that just to for demonstration purposes this is not part of the code you don't need this I just want you to be able to see what's going on so my global variable is keeping track of the counter or what step you're on. So right now it's at zero, it resets itself at the end, but uh, so if I pull the uh, the activation button, my SF switch, and I hold, I've got to hold it down for at least one second. You can change that duration, but if I hold it down for one second, it'll initiate the count, the uh, the steps. So let me hold it down for a second, and I let go. Flight mode one. I've just, has, I've just got it saying, you know, flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three. You can program whatever callouts you want to this. I just needed something to plug into there for a placeholder. So now you can see that I'm on global variable one. That means I'm, a st I'm on step one in this loop. And every time I pull the switch now, I don't need to hold it. The first time to hold it is just to activate it. So if I bump the button, it doesn't uh, trigger it all the time. I've got to intentionally activate that mode. So now I'm just going to pull the switch one more time. Flight mode two. It says flight mode two, now it says two. Flight mode three, flight mode four. Now I've just got the total of five in here, so when it goes to the next step, that's when it's gonna end the loop and it's gonna reset. So that final one, you can have it say whatever you want. Mine just says stop. Stop. Or two and a half, three seconds later, it's gonna reset that back to zero and that's the end of your loop. So you can have that final call out, say whatever you want. Uh, so that's how it works. I think that'll do what you need it to do and you can make that as long as you want. You just have to create a new special function and a new logical switch for each additional step. Let me go into the menus and uh, show you what I got here. Go to your model, go over to special, or excuse me, first we'll do the logical switches. So the very first one here, uh, L01, and then these can be whatever logical switch you want. I just created a new model to keep the logical switches in order so they'll be a little more easy to follow chronologically. Um, so the first one, L01, is an edge, and it's tied to my SF button. Yours will be the other button. And, and that one second is how long you've got to hold it down. So let me go in and take a look at it. Go and edit it. It's an edge, SF, you know, it says the down arrow, but that means you're pulling it up for one second. That means you've got to hold it down for one second and that's to activate it. So right now, if you watch up here in the corner, if I hold that for a second, flight mode one. And I like, oh, you, you probably didn't see that. It just barely flickers because it's only an edge. Let me back out of that and we'll go to the second one. So what you can see here is that it activated the second one. When it did the first one, it activated the second one. LO2 is a sticky, and it's waiting for LO1 to activate to turn it on. So that's what triggers the sticky. And then it's not going to turn off again until LO4 is done. So LO2 is what is the parameter that basically says we're in our loop mode. It's active. So let me pull up LO2. It's a sticky. I'm using LO1 to trigger the sticky, and then LO4 resets it. Nothing else changed in that one. We'll go down to LO3. Now this is the one that triggers, uh, gets you through the different steps. So if LO2 and SF down is active, that's when it'll uh, trigger this logical switch. So LO2, of course, means that we're in the loop mode, and then SF means we've pulled the button again. So if you watch, if time I pull the button, it's going to go, it's going to turn on. Too. As long as I hold it, it's keeping LO3 turned on. Okay, we'll back out of that. Next one down is LO4. Now, this is the one that uh, completes the whole loop. This is the final one. And uh, 
it's uh, it's looking for the edge of the final one to be activated. In my case, it's number five when it said stop. That's what triggers this one. So let me let's take a look at that one. Uh, okay, so LO4 is the the final one that resets everything. That's looking for LO9, which happens to be my final call out. It's got to be on for two and a half seconds, and then once it triggers, it's going to stay on for one second. That's what this one does. And all these timing things just have to do with letting it do its call out and then perform the reset, which you'll see when you get in the special function. The next one, we get into LO5 and on. All we're doing is a compare. We're looking at, uh, so first one here, edit, A equals X. We're looking at global variable one, and I'll explain that why in a minute, but we're using global variable one for our, for our status, for our, where we at in the loop. So global value one, if it equals one, LO5 turns on and, uh, and on and on. So you just create a new one for every single step you want. I've just got them saying one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you can get that all the way to 10. I think your uh, request said you wanted to do 10 different things. You just keep making new ones until you get to 10. Now the last one is, is the only one that's different. When you get to the final step, I'm gonna edit that one. We're comparing that to, to number five. Yours may be 10 or 11 or whatever you got. Make sure that one's got a duration of three seconds. It'll stay on. Because what happens is in the special functions, I'm resetting this one back to zero, and it's got to be on for at least three seconds before that happens. Otherwise, it'll it'll uh, won't reset properly. So that final step makes sure you've got the the duration in there of three seconds. Okay. So that's all those as many as you need. Okay. Now let's go over to the special functions. First one, SF1, we're looking at LO4. This is the, the one that resets the global variable back to zero. So when LO4 goes active, it's going to adjust global variable one back to zero. And of course, make sure you got it enabled. That's all that one does. That's how your uh, loop gets reset. Okay, next one down, special function two, or the first time, this is when you first activate the, the loop. LO2 comes on the first time it changes that global variable one from a zero to a one. It, it only runs this one one time. Okay. Next one, global variable three, is the one that steps you through each time you pull a switch. So let me go into here. So LO3, that's the one that turns on every time I pull a switch. So if you notice that I pull the switch right now, special function three is gonna activate. Flight mode three. Every time I do that, it's gonna increment and add one more to that global variable one. And that'll step us through those, through the steps. Okay, back out of that. And then uh, starting with special function four, these are just playing all your tracks. Uh, like I said, I've just got it playing flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three, flight mode four. Those, you just keep going and make it say whatever you want until the final one. And these are all exactly the same. And then your final one have it say whatever you want. I just have mine saying stop because that's the end. You can have it, you know, just say your last command. Once it says the final command, a uh, couple seconds later, it's going to reset that global variable back to zero and then it's going to start over again. And you'll have to pull the, the uh, button again for one second to uh, trigger that to start that process over again. So I'll just look at one of these here. These are all the same. It's just whatever global, ver uh, whatever logical switch is active. It's going to play the track for that specific step in your loop. And uh, I use the exclamation point 1x. That means it's going to say at one time, and the exclamation point at the beginning means it's not going to say that when you power up the radio. And just, of course, make sure these are all active. That's all of it. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Any questions, put them in the comments below. But uh, this will step you through those counters. I'll look at this again. Uh, pull the trigger. Oh, it's right now we're on step three. Flight mode four. And then the next one will be the end. Stop. A couple seconds later, it'll go back to zero. Uh, hopefully that takes care of it for you. It's a little bit of more complex code, but uh, hopefully that makes sense. You're just using a global variable to keep track of what step you're on, and then you're incrementing through that one at a time each time you pull the trigger.